Hello, good morning. Dear uh, Dr. Singh, uh, dear EP colleagues, and this is Dr. Min Long Chen from Nanjing Medical University Hospital, also Xuzhou Medical University Hospital. So I'm privileged to be to organize this eighth ablation module on behalf of APHIS. Today, uh, I'm honored to have my uh, dear friend Dr. Singh from uh, Delhi, uh, India, and who was also uh, joining our stable ESR trial five years ago. So uh, uh, today's uh, cases are focused on the persistent atrial fibrillation uh, ablation. So today we have two uh, cases of persistent AF ablation. One is a uh, video recorded uh, demo case. The other is live demo transmission case. So I'm very happy to have Dr. Thing, uh, Dr. Singh with us to uh, chair this AF module. And uh, Dr. Singh uh, will be the chairman of this uh, uh, session. So uh, Dr. Singh, uh, uh, can you please say hello to the audience, to the doctors? Good morning, uh, uh, everybody, and uh, and it's such a pleasure to have you here. I've not seen you for many years. Uh, we had a great uh, time when we met last at the PHRS, and uh, it's such a pleasure that you are uh, in this uh, in this session where we did the stable SR trial with you and had fantastic results, which were published in Circ EP. And uh, your interest in uh, persistent atrial fibrillation and idiopathic VT has been recognized world over. So it's such a pleasure to have you here in this symposium. And uh, we are going to have uh, a bonanza of two cases, one a radio recorded case and one live case, to learn how we do a step-by-step -step approach to persistent AF, which is not an easy ablation at all. Yeah. And is one of the most difficult ablations for an EPA electrophysiologist. So let's hear you uh, today, and we hope that we have a very enjoyable session at hand. Next 90 minutes here. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, Dr. Singh. So can we move over to the uh, uh, video case? So Dr. Lee, uh, can you uh, briefly introduce the patient history which we did two weeks ago? Okay, okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Dr. Lee uh, from. Okay, okay. Oh, where it opens up. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's my pleasure to attend this meeting. Uh, let me introduce the patient's medical history. Uh, she is 67 years old. The chief complaint was the palpitations and the chest tightness after the activity for more than seven months, seven days worse. And she had no past history, no history of hypertension, no diabetes, and no coronary heart disease. And the blood pressure is normal, and the heart rhythm is worse irregular, and about 110 beats per minute, no distended jugular vein, no edema of both lower limb. And the laboratory results was normal. The liver dysfunction, the kidney dysfunction was normal. And he took amidaro one tablet once a day and took warfarin for anticoagulation with stable international normalized ratio. Uh, and uh, the trap score was two and the heart split score was only one. Uh, that's all, thanks. Okay, let's uh, show the video case. And the half millimeter diameter is the Shizu uh, Medical University Hospital. So we are doing a case of persistent atrial fibrillation. She is a female case. Uh, six, seven years old with the uh, persistent air for seven months and the left atrium is around 45 millimeter diameter and she had a history of hypertension and the child, child's vascular vascular score is around two and the has blood score is only one 
uh, she received she 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 was willing to have this uh, procedure so uh, she hadn't had the history of cardioversion and today the the this is my colleague dr lee and dr ma and they will do the uh, the uh, uh, transceptor now so after all the catheters have been placed in the right place so we put a uh, uh, deflectable uh, uh, tachypolar catheter in the coronary sinus so you can see the recordings of the signal all the signals from coronary sinus and then we put a uh, a uh, quantiple catheter at the his position area. So this is the uh, uh, two long guiding wire to the SVC. So now we are doing the transeptal uh, procedures to the left atrium. You can see that the we are doing the transeptal often in the AP view. So we are doing the uh, uh, transeptal. So uh, the the uh, initially we will put the guiding wire in the SVC uh, and advance the lung sheaths to the SVC uh, uh, region and then uh, advance the needle through the uh, lung sheaths and draw back. So uh, the 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 needle and the sheaths will be uh, clockwise to five o'clock or even sometimes six o'clock. Then draw back. And you can see from SVC to the uh, uh, right atrium, we have two jumps. One is the jump from the SVC to uh, right atrium. Okay, the cheese now is in the left atrium. And the second jump is from the right now atrium to the fossil ovaries. So then we will the, uh, uh, puncture the uh, uh, fossil area to the left atrium. We'll do the uh, second uh, transceptor. So this is the second transceptor. Also from SVC, you can see the first jump from SVC to the right atrium. This is the second jump. Okay, the needle is passed to the left atrium. And then hold the needle and advance the uh, sheets a little bit more. Okay, this is the uh, lung sheaths. So we are putting one at the left superior, one at the right superior. We will do the uh, angiography to see the uh, uh, left atrium. So r now the tip of the uh, sheath is almost at the uh, ostium or the antrum part of the right right pulmonary veins. So when you uh, inject the contrails, you can see the whole left atrium body, the appendage, the right superior, right inferior, and also. Sorry, no. So we are using the lung sheets to do the left atrium angiography to see the four veins appendage, the uh, uh, whole contour of the left atrium. 
And then we advance the uh, circular mapping catheter to the right superior. And this is the uh, contact for sensing catheter through the uh, deflectable uh, Agilis sheath to the left atrium. And now we are to the uh, respiration compensation because the patient is under general uh, uh, So for the, the, the and now we are doing the uh, geometry. So you yeah, so and now we are to the uh, respiration compensation because the patient is under general anesthesia. So this is easy to do. And then we. Uh, respiration compensation because the patient is under general anesthesia so this is easy to do and then we will optimize all the catheters and th this is right inferior so four vents And now Dr. Lee is moving CT. Ah, Ablation caster is now on the anterior entrance of the right superior. So here take a point. So after the uh, geometry, after the uh, we are tagging the uh, entrance the, the entry point. And we will do the uh, circumferential isolation of the right epicellateral veins. So start uh, start ablation. So you can see this is a uh, first pass the PV isolation. So uh, after the ring was finished, the uh, all the signals from the right uh, superior, right and also right inferior, all the signals are gone. So this is a very beautiful circumferential isolation of the right vans. Then we will move over to the left side. So this is the uh, annotation or tag of the entrance part of the left pulmonary vans. Yeah, sinus ring. Yeah, start. You can see. So see the this signal. is the uh, the uh, four sensing catheter. So we can use the ASI to guide all the lesions. You can see the uh, contact force and also the uh, lesion size. So this is a very uh, big ring for the left side isolation. So normally for the persistent atrial fibrillation patients, we often use the, the uh, wide circumferential isolation, try to covering more tissue. 
Okay, this is uh, the, the uh, uh, final isolation of the uh, left side. Then we will, then we will do the patient to sinus rhythm. The uh, side. Three components, national air, if you tell you, I didn't tell you. Mapping, the higher density substrate mapping. The uh, substrate map, you can see the voltage, if you define by 0.1 to 0.4, looks normal. But if you uh, redefine the voltage by uh, 0.4 to 1.3, now you can see those uh, transitional areas. But look at the uh, ablation cathode, you can see the signals from proximal to distal all fractionated with three at least three components and the last one is almost the lay potential so this is the disease area and we also double check using the ablation catheter to those areas with poor contact and the low voltage and but you can see only a patch for small area almost close to the mitral ring anteriorly, that's a small low voltage area. Please take the voltage of 0.4 to 1.3. Okay, so this is the uh, transitional area. You can see uh, those relatively low voltage area, but this is not really a scar area, but that's the, those, I think the mild, mildly diseased area or very subtle diseased area. So in this area, we will only do those points with complex electrograms to eliminate those points. And but look at the posterior wall to see the posterior rule. So you can see the, the uh, posterior wall is, is almost diseased using this definition. So uh, then we will decide the substrate modification strategy. So I think the uh, the uh, uh, right inferior, almost to the septal area, this is the uh, uh, transitional area with fractionated electrograms. So these points, we should do the ablation to eliminate. And the posterior wall, I think we should do the box lesion. Okay? down very quickly, almost to black to the isolate, uh, silent. So you can see the signal before the patient. Yeah, it's just one to the other, it's a language. Now you can see nothing from the uh, ablation catheter, no signal. So this is really the uh, electrical silent area or silent point. Then move over to a new point, you can see the signal. Really 
a big box. So we have finished all the uh, substrate modification. So posterior wall box isolation. So no capture, you can see. So this is the uh, uh, ablation catheter placed and the posterior wall of the isolated area, so we are case here, but you can see the contact force is good. Almost so no here, capture, you can see? But no capture, you see? So the, the, the whole atrium is activated by sinus rhythm, but there's no capture in the, at the posterior wall. So this is the uh, beautiful uh, box isolation of the posterior wall. Now we will move over to the sub to the anterior septal area. Mm -hmm. That region, the the uh, complex electrograms were eliminated, and also the, the the isolation was completed. So move over to the anterior wall. <laughs> Mm. So we have finished all the uh, substrate modification. So posterior wall box isolation, anterior wall the complex electrogram uh, elimination in the transitional areas. Now we have finished uh, all the substrate modification and. and uh, the other thing is the anterior wall close to the mitral annulus, there's a small uh, scar area. So we homogenize this small scar clear, uh, area and do the uh, uh, ablation catheter pacing and the capture. So that's a really a homogenization uh, result. And finally, we will check the, all the PVs are completely isolated. So this is left side still silent. And this is the right side, okay, oh, it's a silent. So this is a typical stable SR ablation strategy for persistent atrial fibrillation. Now we will finish the, all the procedure and take the catheters out. So since we have finished the uh, procedure, we finally will review the, all the leaching sets. So these are the two rings to isolate the, uh, the vents, the right side ring and the, the left side ring. You can see these rings are really cover the entrance tissue of the pulmonary vents. So after cardioversion to sinus rhythm, then we do the high density substrate map to, do, to see, to do the voltage map. You can see the, this is the anterior wall and on the right side is the posterior wall. You can see using the definition of 0.1 to 0.4 looks almost normal. But then we will see the uh, uh, voltage by uh, 0.3 to uh, 0.4 to 1.3. So try to see the uh, transitional areas and its and its distribution. So in the uh, in the transitional area, we are focusing on searching the uh, signals of complex electrograms. You can see actually in this case, the transitional area is huge, but you cannot isolate all these transitional areas, but we only search those complex electrograms to, to do the uh, um, substrate modification to eliminate those points. So on the posterior wall, you can see that is the uh, 
uh, transitional area, you can see the whole area is diseased. So we decided to do the box isolation. So this is the box isolation. You can see the roof line and the floor line join these two rings. And finally, we will check this box is isolated. So we will do the pace to see uh, whether the local tissue can be captured. And also, we put the circular mapping catheter inside this box to see the signals. And all the signals are gone. Because there's a small area with low voltage, that's almost the sky area. The voltage is very low, so we will do the homogenization in this small area. So this is a, a anterior wall, small patch, score close to the mitral ring, so we will do the homogenization. And finally, we will paste this area to see whether the tissue can be captured. And finally, we are successful to do homogenization at this area. Uh, right inferior and anterior wall, that's the uh, transitional area. We've, we have found a lot of complex electrograms on the uh, anterior wall and close to the uh, right ring. So we will do the uh, linear lesion to close these transitional area. Actually, we eliminate all the points with complex electrograms. And by voltage map and substrate map, you can see the right inferior and posterior. That is an area with low voltage, but the complex electrogram can be found in this area. And the signals is very much fractionated with at least three uh, components and almost the lay potential like ventricular recording in the pathological VT patients. So you can see the uh, right inferior anterior the wall of the left atrium, you can see this is really a sinus rhythm map, but you can see the fra uh, fractionated electrogram here. So this is not the uh, signal during a fi atrial fibrillation, but the signals during the uh, uh, sinus rhythm, but you can see the, the electrogram is very much fractionated, long-lasting with multiple components. So this is the region, this is the transitional area with the interesting points and we should do the, the ablation to eliminate these points. So please see the uh, uh, leaching set in this area. With all these have done, we will finish the procedure. And this is a typical stable SR procedure for persistent atrial fibrillation. Okay, Dr. Singh, uh, any uh, suggestions, comments, or the, uh, the discussing point? Right, so Dr. Minglong, I would like you to explain this voltage part again, that when do you change the scale to the voltage to 1.3? I want to understand that uh, because this is very important for the audience to understand that what does a voltage criteria mean uh, for a normal left atrium and when you are ablating in a persistent AF? Uh, you mean the definition of the voltage? Yes, you said that you changed to look at the transition zones. You yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, in our uh, initial study, we, we, we had a pre-study of stable SR and we are mapping the normal uh, left atrium uh, when those patients receiving uh, extra pathway ablation. So these patients, they do not have any uh, cardiovascular risk factors. So uh, the left atrium is supposed to be normal. And then we will do the high density mapping using the uh, circular mapping catheter. So the whole atrium, the left atrium, we are taking uh, almost 300 points. And we found that um, the uh, voltage, uh, 95% of the points, the voltage is over uh, uh, 0, uh, 0.38. So then we uh, define that only 5% uh, of the points, the voltage is below uh, 0.4. So this is why we define the low voltage uh, at 0.4. Uh, because this is based on the normal left atrium, the, the, the uh, statistical analysis, so fine. 
percent of the points are below uh, 0 0.4. So this is why we define the low voltage at 0.4. But the transitional area, we, we, we also see uh, most of the points in the normal region, the voltage is almost uh, over 1.3. So uh, then we uh, define this is the transitional area. So I think the left atrium, you cannot define the, the normal left atrium is only black and white. So disease area with chaos area. So there should be a transitional area. But transitional areas, the voltage comes down and the electrogram is complex. So this is why we define the transitional area based on the voltage between 0.4 to 1.3. And But in this area, some of the patients, the area is huge, the, trans the, the transitional area. So you cannot homogenize or isolate this transitional area. So we only eliminate those points with complex electrogram, like what we did in our video demo case. So the septal, the anterior points, the voltage is uh, lowered, and also the electrogram is complex. So uh, we will do the uh, substrate modification in such regions to eliminate those complex uh, points. Right. So uh, a very nice demonstration of this case and a very good understanding. Uh, so what percentage of patients, I would ask you this question, that just you do PVI and you don't find any substrate after that? How many percentage of patients with persistent AF? Uh, would you get, you know, you've done the PVI, and now you look at the atrium and it's normal. There's nothing wrong with it. Okay, very good question, Dr. Singh. So uh, I think uh, doing a persistent atrial fibrillation when you are doing subject map. So please remember three one thirds. So the first one thirds complete normal. When you are, uh, isolate all the vents, you can't avoid the patient to sinus rhythm, then the voltage is normal. So take one third. The other one third is the patient had the low voltage areas and also the transitional areas. So the, the three third, only if the patient have transitional areas without low voltage areas. So in the transitional areas, we only have to do the complex electrogram elimination. So three one third. Right. And, uh, um... So based on these, uh, what do you think would be the success rate in terms of one year uh, sinus rhythm maintenance in this technique? Uh, if the uh, uh, patient is in normal uh, voltage, so the uh, uh, success rate almost, you know, uh, is around 80%, 80%. But if those patients with only transitional areas with complex electrograms, and after the PV isolation and you eliminate those points with complex electrograms, so the success rate is around 70%. But for those patients with low voltage areas and also the transitional areas, so further uh, 10 points, 10% 10 low rate. So, the, 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 the uh, uh, success rate after one year is almost 80, 70, and 60. So normally when you do sufficient modification of the substrate, the, the average substrate of one year ablation is around 70%. Right. So uh, I think uh, we had a very good discussion on this case and thank you very much for a wonderful uh, presentation. Um, I guess we move on to the the next uh, live case, uh, uh, which is for 45 minutes. And uh, this live transmission is uh, by uh, Dr. Yang uh, from Nanjing uh, Medical University. And uh, this also will bring highlights to another aspect of persistent atrial fibrillation. Okay, hello, Dr. Yang. Hello. Hello, Dr. Yang, Dr. Liu. Can you say hello to the audience, to uh, uh, Dr. Singh? Can you hear me?
Hello. Uh, hello. Hello, Dr. Good Singh. Good Can you hear me? Yes, good morning. Uh, yes, yes. Good morning. 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 Good Two months ago, uh, he came to our hospital for the persistent AFib, and we gave him the amiodarone and uh, anticoagulation. And uh, the patient with uh, very mild palpitation, mild symptoms, not very severe. So he had uh, uh, hesitated about the ablation procedure, but uh, we gave him version one month ago, and also gave him the amiodarum. But uh, the atrial fibrillation still occur uh, uh, repeat, repetitively, also occur and uh, have the symptoms. And uh, he decided to get the ablation procedure. And uh, this time, we do the echo uh, examination and uh, the left uh, atrium size is about 40 millimeter and uh, a mild re uh, mitral regurgitation, uh, mild uh, uh, aortic regurgitation. And he has a, a history of only have the hypertension. So the child's vascular score only is one and uh, nothing else, uh, no stroke, no uh, diabetes. He uh, uh, playing the ablation procedure. But this morning, I checked his pulse, and uh, his rhythm spontaneous can convert to sinus rhythm. And uh, we do the, uh, 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 left atrium geometry creation and uh, do the palmar ring isolation. Before we do the isolation, we we just uh, map the voltage. Can you show us the voltage map? Uh, can, you, can you see our uh, voltage map? No, we can't see. Okay. Can you change the 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 lady? Please see the voltage map. Yes, so actually this is a persistent AF and the patient is was refracted to antiarrhythmic drugs. Uh, on amiodarone and propafinum. And but this morning, the, 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 you know, the, the AF scared away. So uh, the, the patient automatically revert to sinus rhythm. So we only do the PV isolation and also the uh, subfit map using the H degree. Yes, Are you using H degree? Yes, this time we use H degree. H so the, is this map by H degree or by circular mapping catheter? So uh, after we do the uh, hominary isolation, we use the uh, uh, contact force catheters, tactic catheter. And uh, on the anterior wall, we use uh, 45 watts. And uh, the saline flue is setting at uh, 17 millimeter. Uh, and uh, we, on the anterior wall, we set the RSI, uh, RS induction about uh, 5.5. .5. On the posterior wall, we set RSI, RSI about, about uh, 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 3.5 to 4. And the pulmonary vein isolation is uh, very smooth, uh, very effectively. We do the two, two circle, yeah, uh, in about, uh, uh, 40 minutes. And now we decided to remap the left atrium again. 
and to see the, 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 the LA substrate map. And uh, I will use two kinds of catheter. One is etched grid, another we will use AFOX2, and we will see what's the difference between the, the different uh, uh, catheters with the different uh, electro space. Dr. Chen? Yeah, are these two maps are the uh, uh, subject map before isolation or, I, or, or after isolation? So these two no, maps are no, before no, isolation. No, you can right? say the map is before we do the pulmonary ring isolation. Okay, and uh, okay. after I isolation, I haven't done the, the mapping. So now I decided to do the mapping. Use okay. two kinds of catheter. Okay. So Dr. Singh, any comments? So, Dr. Xin, can you hear me, Dr. Xin? Hey, they can hear me speaking. Let's do a mapping. Use the HD grade. First, do a mapping. After that, 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 do a mapping. Use the etched grid after a pulmonary ring isolation. So, uh, Dr. Yang, this geometry was created by uh, HD grid HD or grid, the yes. cluster. So, this geometry is also created by uh, HD grid, right? Yes, yes. Okay. And uh, this time we use a system reference, system okay. position reference, not use the CS. And okay. very stable. Okay, okay, good. And actually, great to, to do the uh, left atrium uh, geometry, the, the force cavity, the force, uh, the cavity is very less. The, the, mm -hmm. the, the geometry is more precise. Okay. So, uh, then we will do the uh, uh, subject map after PV isolation. So we are using two um, higher density mapping catheters. One is the circular mapping catheter, and the other is the the HD uh, grid mapping catheter. So uh, the uh, uh, everybody knows that the signals recorded from the uh, uh, two uh, neighboring electrodes, the signal the voltage is. You know the the the, the uh, is based on the interspace of the electrodes, the uh, contact force, and also the uh, orientation, and also the orientation of the the catheters uh, to the uh, uh, wave from propagation direction. So this is why the uh, HT uh, uh, mapping catheter was created to overcome these uh, limitations because the uh, yeah, HD mapping catheters, we can record the signals yeah, in, the PV in the very PV local is. area from three directions, the, uh, the horizontal, the uh, vertical, and diagonal. So we can have three uh, voltages. So the, the, the biggest voltage we are taking is used for calculating the substrate, the calculating the local activation. And the etch grid catheter is very soft during uh, manipulating the left atrium. So we move the catheter um, very slowly and we can collect more points. And we use uh, auto map function of the inside system. On the posterior wall, we will uh, clockwise rotate the caster, make the caster tip contact with the posterior wall. That purple, that purple is, is correct. Now here is a posterior wall, and we can see the two circle is too close. So 
inferior wing. You can see the iso isolation potential. Can you connect the point? Anti reward. Reward. Okay, uh, here comes the uh, two questions from the audience. One is what is the uh, cut of uh, LA size for persistent air? So, normally the guideline recommended the left atrium size is below 40, uh, 55 millimeters long. And the other question is, how much power for posterior wall, 45 watts, same as anterior wall here, the, uh, the, uh, we are using the uh, 45 watts uh, at the uh, anterior wall, but posterior wall, only uh, 30 watts. Okay, this is the appendage area. So in our uh, experience, uh, we completely use an HD grid for all AF cases, including PB isolation. So I found that uh, HD grid catheter is very soft, can go anywhere into the left atrium quite easily. And mm -hmm. for substrate map, it's excellent because you get very fast, uh, very high density map. And even for PB isolation, uh, we find just putting the catheter into the pulmonary vein, you get the proximal poles in the antrum and you get a very good uh, pulmonary vein potentials even from the HD grid. So we found the HD grid as the only, we don't even use a circular, stopped using a circular catheter and just an HD grid does the whole thing, substrate and PV isolation both. Yeah, I quite agree with you, Dr. Singh. So do you have the experience or do you uh, experience such cases that the, 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 the signals from circular mapping catheter, nothing, silent, but HD grid catheters, you can see some signals. The PV yes, this, is not completely isolated. Yes, Did you it have happened. any experience like that? So it started with that, that uh, the circular mapping was not showing uh, potentials properly or minimal, and we switched to an HD grid and we could see it all over the place. So I find it very useful to look at the pulmonary vein potentials and particularly, the shape of this catheter, uh, it doesn't keep coming in and out like a circular catheter. If you place it precisely at the ostium, it will fall into the antrum, then you push it back. Here, this catheter is very stable, lying inside the pulmonary vein while the proximal part is on the antrum. So you exactly know what you're dealing with and how the potentials are. So I'm quite happy using an HD grid into the mm -hmm. pulmonary vein potentials. Mm -hmm. But when you are using uh, this HD uh, grid catheter, so uh, 
what is your definition for the low voltage? So we keep the same definition as yours for uh, what we learned from the stable SR trial. So I don't change it. Okay. There. Okay. So the second thing is that one has to be careful that when you're using an HD grade and an ablation catheter, uh, you may get your ablation catheter through the grid. And uh, when you pull the grid, uh, the ablation catheter gets fixed into the grid. And this can happen because the grid has uh, holes. So your ablation catheter may get in through one of these holes into the uh, HD grid catheter. And when you pull the HD grid into the sheath, you will have the ablation catheter also coming out with that. So one has to be a little careful about um, the manipulation of ablation catheter when HD grid catheter is in the left atrium. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So clearly this map uh, has very high density as we can see because of the HD grid and yeah. uh, very nice uh, demonstration of uh, normal and uh, transition areas when we uh, map like this. Yeah. So uh, you can see Dr. Yang almost finished his uh, subject map during sinus rhythm and the posterior wall, the voltage is very low. Dr. Minglong, um, if the posterior yeah. wall has uh, such low voltages, would you look for fractionated signals or you would just make a box-like lesion and forget it? Or oh, we will do the uh, box isolation, or at least the uh, short linear lesions. Right. Because the, this low voltage area, maybe it's the uh, natural disease area, but sometimes this is, you know, commonly, are created by the ablation points, right? Because the, the catheter, ablation catheter is not always so stable. So because the two rings are too close, so the, the tissue between these two rings sometimes is damaged. But even if this is not natural disease area, but this is the, the uh, uh, lesions created by the ablation, you also have to do, have to do some prevention, otherwise, the uh, roof-dependent atrial tachycardia will occur. Yes, you are missing the, yeah, mitraismus area. Okay, the voltage is normal. So I think the ablation catheter is in the way for, the, for your HD grid catheter. So can you move over the uh, uh, ablation catheter to the right side? Then you can have a good contact with the mitraismus area. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, this is the uh, healthy area, right? Because the uh, ablation catheter is in the way. Okay, you can see the voltage is quite normal. So this map, uh... Uh, clearly tells us that this patient has a good prognosis, very small area where you will have to touch up in the substrate. The anterior wall is yeah. nearly normal. Mm -hmm. It's mainly in the posterior wall and the roof. Yeah, but you can see uh, here, Dr. Singh, the uh, left superior is uh, the signal is back, you see? Yeah, but sometimes it picks up atrial activity. That's also possible. So we'll have to assess those signals. Yeah, this is the relapse between the uh, 
left A train and the permanent vans. So I think they should do the reinforcement of the uh, uh, ring ablation. So the other question is coming from the uh, audience. There are dissociated signals in the right PVs. Would you like to check if it is two to one conduction or PV automaticity? So I think finally, after we do the uh, substrate map and do substrate modification, before we take up all the cathodes out of the left atrium, we will check all the PVs are completely isolated. We will sometimes using isoprenorol and also the adenosine. So this actually the left side, the uh, relapse between uh, the uh, left superior and the left atrium occurs. Dr. Singh, here's a question for you from the audience. Any other cases you are using HD degree catheter? So we use it uh, for VT, um, both for ischemic and non-ischemic uh, VT. We do, we do for atrial tachycardias, both on the right, right and the left side. Uh, so practically for everything, uh, HD grid is a very good solution, even VT you find um, the kind of uh, mid diastolic potentials that are seen with HD grid. Sometimes you don't even see when you put the ablation catheter or those uh, clear with the clarity that you see those uh, signals. So I'm quite fond of using uh, it for ventricular tachycardia also. Uh-huh, yeah. The other question is, where is the most common reconnection area of the PVI line, Dr. Singh? So the uh, reconnection after a PVI line is most often at the isthmus. Isthmus is between, uh, on the left side, between the appendage and the pulmonary vein, or the isthmus between the two pulmonary veins, where this commonly happens. So the best way to deal with the reconnection is to remap the whole area, reinforce the points where there are signals, atrial signals still present. You want to go on the line, look at areas where you still have atrial activity where they shouldn't have been. These are the best ways to do it rather than, you know, making the circle again. So just touching up some points, reinforcing your lesion where you have may have missed it is all that is required. Mm -hmm. That's exactly the point, Dr. Dr. Young now is doing. So you can see the left side isolated again, right? Yes. So this is always the uh, anterior carinal area of the left side. Can we see that's the anterior carinal area? So I will reinforce that inferior ring because it looks like not enough here. Or the red dot, red tag means the uh, RSI is more than five, more than five. So uh, Dr. Singh, what's your recommendation for uh, LSI at the rich area? So this is the rich area. The so force is not enough. The, the rich is area is the most difficult area to ablate. So uh, uh, we keep the voltage at 40 watts at the ridge area between the appendage and the pulmonary vein. Uh, this area is most important because this is one of the commonest cause of recurrence of a 
align. It has uh, the back and uh, has the, uh, the the sympathetic and the parasympathetic fibers running on the epicardial surface of the uh, of the ridge. So ridge is a very important structure. The ligament of Marshall is on the epicardial surface. So mm -hmm. it's the most important surface. The most difficult problem about the ridge is the catheter falls either into the appendage or into the pulmonary vein and uh, it needs a, a good stabilizing sheath to put it there. So we keep the vault, vaults at 40 um, to reinforce and we generally go back to this area to see if we have still atrial activity uh, once we complete the procedure and I'm very very uh, wary of the fact that this ridge is one of the most important areas to ablate and one should be very concentrating on this area a lot. Mm -hmm. So it is the ridge and the carina which are important areas for reconnections. Yeah, yeah, I quite agree. Mm. And you would see clearly that uh, left-sided veins uh, reconnections are more common than the right-sided veins. Right side is a much simpler anatomy because no ridge is there and takes lesser time mm -hmm. uh, than to do a left side. Mm -hmm. Dr. Singh, do you feel uh, at uh, inferior pulmonary vein uh, on the left side, it's the most difficult part because the contact force is not enough. The contact force much lower compared with the It's clear. Yeah. Yeah. But the contact force is poor. Yeah. Can you uh, counterclockwise your ablation cat a little bit more? Yes, sure. yes, let's go. And and this this maybe this point is outside much far from the ostium. So mm -hmm. you clearly see that how beautiful signals were with the HD grade from the pulmonary veins. And this is one of the important things that uh, I had realized very soon that they produce very good V potentials. Yeah. And you also saw that um, it was the crina where uh, there was this activity coming from. So there's a question that um, well, how much power is suitable for ablation in the carina based on LSI or not? Unfortunately, uh, we don't have data to suggest that if your contact force is 15, you reduce your power. If it is five, you increase your power. I don't see FTI or uh, this data coming up because this is very important. If somebody can come out with the formula that if your contact force is high, a power of 15 may be enough. If contact mm -hmm. force is low, you may need 30 watts. This data is still lacking. We understand that it it is okay, it yeah. is logical yeah, to believe. Nico, you wanna go? But still we don't know. Okay. So now Dr. Yang is trying to using the circular mapping catheter to do the uh, uh, next subfit mapping to see whether these two maps have some difference. So, but very quick map. The flash of casters. ACT, you just took how many? Dr. Singh, do you uh, uh, use ACT for the uh, monitoring of the uh, anticoagulation during the procedure? Yes, we do. And, so what, uh, level, uh, what level do you uh, keep during the whole procedure? So more than, three, more than 300. 
more than 300, less than 400, right? Yes. Okay, similar practice. Now we will remap the left atrium again, your circular map catheter. Okay, catheter, ma. This is why we can't get it first. Engineers, you can't do the work first. Hmm. Oh, give me the peer view. Connect the points, no? Why do you need to repeat the same thing? Could you show us the surface point? Hmm. Ah, now we will do the uh, voltage map of the left atrium use a circular mapping caster. That's uh, after we, uh, just now we do the voltage map use HD grid. And now we change another caster to check whether there's difference between the different uh, mapping caster on the voltage map. Show us the free wall. Free wall.
only to connect to under a centrism. Okay, on the septum. Ah, uh, uh, because uh, this patient, the, the left atrium is uh, quite healthy, not so many uh, lower voltage area, and uh, we still uh, hard to find any very abnormal signals, because in the stable SR uh, approach, uh, we we have two. Uh, key steps. One is uh, homogenization, the lower voltage area. Another is elimination, uh, the abnormal signal uh, on the transitional zone. So for this patient, uh, his uh, left atrium is quite healthy. Not so many lower voltage area. This is the uh, fossa, fossa area. It's, it's quite normal. The voltage is quite normal. Yeah. So I mentioned before that we, we will remember three one thirds, right? So this is one third of the patient persistent AF, but no substrate at the left atrium body. And the other one third is some of the patients they have no low voltage area, but they have transitional area. And the third, third patients, they have the low voltage area and also the uh, transitional areas. So this is a Connect, quite yeah. normal left atrium. So there's no signal difference between these two catheters. But if you, if you are using the uh, different definition because the inter space between the two uh, electrodes is quite different. So, uh, so, so another thing I think the if the patient uh, the patient to the left atrium is uh, are quite normal. So the difference between the two catheter is not so apparent. If the patient with lot of the lower edge area, lower voltage area, maybe the the, 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 the mapping results can see the difference apparently. Yeah. But still there are some uh, differences. You can see uh, using this catheter because the H degree catheter, the far field signal is less, but Using yeah. this, uh, yes. So you notice that you notice oh, that yeah. the left superior you have a lot of signals coming from the appendage. So this is the far field signals. But using HD HD Greek catheter, you don't have so many far field signals. So please compare these two maps. 
。OK， 把两个图标色图对比一下。刚才陈主任说的，他的那个肺静脉装上肺静脉的那个原厂是很明显的，这个我也看到了。那个上肺静脉那个那个 H D grade 那个拿出来。So, Doctor Singh, since this uh, patient, the the uh, left atrium is healthy, almost normal. So, uh, there's you know uh, very little uh, difference between these two voltage maps. Well, not this. I want to show uh, the two maps with the two casters. So this map is the uh, circular mapping catheter map, right? No, this is H grid. H grid. Can you show me the uh, LAO? Give me the left side. 这个是 ，Now we can see the the、uh, the map is、uh, circular map, use a circular、uh, mapping catheter. This map. So、And、on the right side is the circular mapping catheter. Left side is the、uh, H degree map. No. This is the same, same map. map. Same map. Using using a circular, circular mapping map. Catheter. Okay, so you can see the.、Uh, Voltage from the left superior, so all these signals are five year signals. Can you go back to the H degree to see the signals from the left superior and left inferior? 给他看那个 H degree 的标尺的那个。演示快结束了，你台下是谁呀、啊？这个速度咋这么？ Okay, you can see here from the HD green map, you can see from the uh, left pulmonary veins, the, uh, the signals coming from the appendage, these five-year signals are much less. You agree? Yes. Yes. So this is why the HD green mapping is really the high density and also high resolution, less five-year signals. So finally, Dr. Yang, we are, I think you will do a small box isolation of yes. the posterior wall. Sure, sure, definitely. Because、uh, I will close the、uh, channel between the two circles on the posterior wall. Okay, thank you. 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 Dr. Chen, I have another、uh, question. Because the patient、uh, is quite young, not so old, so do we do the、uh, empirically ablation in SVC? Superior of the cavity for this patient.、Uh, I don't think we should do SVC isolation during uh, uh, this procedure because、okay. this is、uh, you know persistent atrial fibrillation, and I think the uh, uh, we are trying to、uh, ablate those maintaining substrate at the、uh, PV entering area. But the, if SVC sometimes the the the, the patient. Can have SVC triggers, but I think this. So how how old is this patient? Fifty. 
50. So uh, Dr. Singh, do you agree to isolate the SVC or no, anything else? I won't do SVC unless the patient has a recurrence. Uh, there is nothing to suggest SVC ablation reduces the IF burden, so I would not touch SVC. Yeah, I agree. So we only uh, do the uh, lesions based on the substrate. I have a question for you, uh, Professor Minyong. Uh, those patients who have paroxysmal AF, uh, do you, after PVI, do a substrate uh, modification or do you look at the substrate or you just do the PVI and forget about it? In paroxysmal, we are talking with persistence, yes, you should do something more. But in paroxysmal, would you just do a PVI or would you look at the substrate subsequently after doing the PVI? Good question. Which is similar to uh, persistent AF. So uh, currently, uh, Dr. Singh, we are doing the stable, uh, stable SR3 trial, but this trial is only for those paroxysmal AF and, in, and senior patients. Patients with paroxysmal AF with age over 65, we will do the isolation and also the subject map for the left atrium body. But for the young patients, I think triggering factor is more important. But for the senior patients with paroxysmal AF, PV isolation plus the uh, substrate modification, I think can, in some of the patients, at least maybe 10% of the patients, you can increase the overall success rate by the single procedure. Okay, uh, Dr. Singh, we are almost close to this session since the time is almost, uh, 11.30, so uh, can you make some comments and close our session today? So uh, today's session was a very important session because persistent AF is one of the most difficult arrhythmias to treat. So the concept is very clear that if you have a substrate which is diseased, such patients have a poor prognosis. So you must do something more than PVI. There has been no consensus as to what is the best approach to do uh, persistent AF. Uh, no consensus means that we are still learning. We still need to learn. But one thing that is surely learned is that if you have a substrate which is bad, the likelihood of a prognosis is not as good as a person who does not have a, which, who has a normal substrate. Mm. So if you can do a substrate modification, you are likely to improve your results. So the question was whether you should do it in the first attempt or whether you should wait for a recurrence to happen and then do it. Uh, we in the stable SR found that doing in the first attempt itself is a good idea because if you're doing not too much uh, too much lesion, so like for example today, if you have a posterior wall involved, just a box-like lesion, not doing too much. So in the first attempt, don't do ablate too much. So simple lesions, less lesions is a good idea in the first attempt. And I thank uh, Professor Minglong and Professor Yang for such beautiful demonstration. The second subject we think we learned is that uh, I personally find HD grid mapping a very useful tool and you saw today uh, the clear um, differences and clear similarities between a circular mapper, mapping catheter uh, map versus an HD grid map. Thank you very much for your attention and we had a wonderful session indeed today morning. Thank you, Dr. Singh. Thank you, Professor Ling, and uh, um, uh, and thank you, um, Abbott, for having made this uh, symposium so interesting. Thank you, Professor Minglong. Thank you.